Hello and welcome to another episode of the Agency Leadership Podcast. I'm Chip Griffin. And I'm Jenny Dietrich. And if you're watching us on video, you can see us right down below. We've got our, our little caricature heads sitting yeah. right underneath. And if you're listening to us, you can't see that, you so you don't think it. it's funny. But he was patting our heads for a while there. It was kind of amazing. His yeah. head also keeps hitting the edge of agencyleadershippodcast.com yes. on the graphics. Oh, but if you're listening, again, you can't see it. Right. So but if, you're, but, but if you haven't forward. ever seen us on video, you really should. You should, you should go over to agencyleadershippodcast.com, click on one of the episodes, and you can see us in video. And, mm -hmm. and maybe, what, maybe one day we'll even do this live so that you can chip in with your own two cents while we're mm -hmm. recording. Yes. It would, be, it would be a vast improvement, I'm sure, if we got some input from the audience. <laughs> It would be more than a vast improvement. <laughs> well, but I mean, right now we get input from our third co-host and the hamster. We occasionally get to hear from your dog. January 19th, January 19th, January 19th. Yeah. I, January 19th. Delusional, delusional, delusional. That's that's all I have to say. It is the light at the end of the tunnel and you are not going to ruin it for me. You know, if going you, back to school if, January 19th. If you want to believe that they are resuming in-person classes on January 19th in Chicago, you by all means I believe it. Embrace it. I'm embracing. I believe it. It's happening January okay. 19th. Well, the good news for our listeners here is that we are that as you're listening to this, this is this is right before the holiday break for most of you. So mo most of you will will hopefully be taking some time off. I think I was actually talking with a client this morning. I, I, I think that that more people than usual are going to take time off between yeah. Christmas and New Year's this year than uh, than you would usually see. I think most people are just spent. I know Everybody's I am. Everybody's spent. Yeah. I mean, even the this and this is this will make you laugh, but. For, or roll your eyes, one of the two, maybe both. But I, I'm a morning person. I get up at 4.45 every morning. You do too. Like it doesn't, that's just what I do. I have slept in the last two days, didn't even hear my alarm. Like that's not usual, typical for me at all. Now what what is sleeping in for you though? 6.45 yesterday. And Holy cow. Today. I know. Wow. See, I, I, I consider 6 a.m. sleeping in. If if if, if when nice. I when I open my eyes and I look at my watch and it's after 6, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Something crazy happened. Yeah. That's wow. really unusual. So I think, yeah, to your point, everybody's just done. <laughs> yep. Unfortunately, done, done, as, done. as we record <clears throat> this, we still have some time. So while people listening will be coming up on their break. <laughs> you got to get one more episode out of me. That's true. Yeah, that is that is true. Although you know, we're, we're you you did decide that we had to not record on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. I did do that. I mean, yes. talk about slacking. Mm -hmm. I'm it's fine just, with that. You can call me a slacker. I don't care. I what I once got a call from a reporter at I think it was six or six thirty p.m. on Christmas Eve. Wow! About what? Uh, it wasn't even an urgent thing. It wasn't. No, it was uh, it was an investigative reporter for the Washington Post who was working on a, a longer term piece that he and I had been collaborating on. Um, I was one of his sources, and he just had a he had a question. Hmm. Hmm. Well, so be it. So be it. I mean, he, he didn't celebrate Christmas, so that probably contributed to him looking at it as just any other day. Well, and a day that uh, you can probably get work done without being interrupted, which right. is how I would look at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's there's that, too. Uh, and, of course, this was back in the time. This was pre-cell phones. I mean, this was 30, almost 30 years ago now. And uh, so at, at that point, my, my wife, who was then my girlfriend, said, you're unplugging the phone. <laughs> No more of this. It's Christmas Eve. Not happening. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> I, I once had a Wall Street Journal reporter call me not on deadline at one a.m. in the morning. He yeah. just he he was just he was he was a little a little bit um, high strung, shall we say? Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So one a.m. Just I mean woke me up out of a dead sleep, and it was not a deadline. I mean I knew it wasn't deadline because the Wall Street Journal doesn't have any deadline. Right. In the the early to mid nineteen nineties, that would have been a one a.m. It just they weird. Yeah, so he just and he, he just, thought that was okay. He did. He was huh. he was an odd duck. I mean, he I I, I and at some point we'll actually get to the real episode here, but um, <laughs> but it, the first time I met him in person, he came into my office on Capitol Hill, and he perched up on the arm of my 
couch in my office because I was committee staff, so I had a, my own office. And he perched up on the the arm of the couch to talk like like a bird or something. It was. <laughs> It was the strangest thing I've ever seen. So from, he, like, in, was he like his feet were up there and he was like perched? Yes, yes, yeah, his feet. Yeah, he was balancing on it and 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 asking it to the point where <laughs> since I had I had only ever spoken with him on the phone, I actually called up someone else who I knew knew him and I said, I said, can you just confirm that this is the that, that I'm not being punked here that I don't have, you know, that I'm not being targeted by someone who's trying to you know get me to reveal stuff that I would another yeah, you know, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah and and he's like no that's that sounds exactly like and then insert the name huh well and i will not insert the name here because this is a you know we're, we're publishing this and this is still someone who's very much around so is he still around <laughs> he is <clears throat> if not, I get- not not for the wall street journal but he is still around is he still reporting? Uh, we're gonna move right <laughs> along here now, Jenny. I'd really like to guess you, who it is. You you can you can press me after we hit the oh, stop button on recording. But I am there's no way I'm going down this path while we're saving this for posterity. Fine. So in any case, all right, so uh, enough of this posterity. Let's let's get into the posterity of, I don't know, useful information um, and the actual topic of today's episode, which is project managers. Yes. We want to talk about this because this is something that came up where? In the Spin Sucks community because it's where all great conversation happens, or at least a lot of great conversation. Well, conversation for sure. Right. It's actually hopping right now. Everybody's... It, I mean, it had quieted down for a few yeah. months there, and now all of a sudden it's people happened. seem to have woken up and said, oh, oh. <laughs> I, I, there's a place I can get my questions answered. <laughs> right. It's kind of nice. I like it. It, it, is, it is great. It is, yeah. It's great for us on this show. I mean, right, it makes it so much again. easier. We don't have to think about topics too much, which <laughs> that's always dangerous. Uh, so um, since it's the Spin Sucks community, as always, I will let you kick it off and, and share oh, more shoot. about what the question was. I don't oh, okay. Open. Well, since I have it open, then I will I will rescue you. Thank you. Um, so this was a question uh, from someone asking, determining if a project manager should be brought onto the team to help manage workflow across uh, several client accounts uh, as the agency scales and grows. And there were some specific questions, pros and cons of a project manager being part of the team. Um, when does it make sense to hire a project manager? When does it not make sense? Do you prefer to have your project managers internal or client facing? Uh, and has any agency used uh, project managers in a self-management environment and examples and such anything else that they did not ask? So that's really a huge landscape that we can pursue. So I guess really the question is, you know, what are your thoughts on project managers in the agency environment? So we have never had an, a project manager in my agency, but <clears throat> certainly coming from both an ad agency and a global PR firm, we did. Um, this is the first year that I have felt like we needed one because a lot of times the project management lies with the account directors and with the the leadership team. And it's too much for me. I can't, it's, it's becoming too unbearable. So this is the, so it was an interesting question from that perspective, but this is the first year that I have felt like we've needed some, somebody to help manage all of this stuff. Cause it's a lot, it's a lot. And it's for some reason, a lot more this well, <laughs> never mind. I've got all this other stuff going on. <laughs> right. As, as you may be able to hear her, her student, since Ginny is also a teacher now is sitting adjacent and in a quote unquote class. They're doing arts and crafts right now. Arts and crafts. Yes. By, yeah. Quote unquote. Yeah. Oh, we should have an arts and crafts episode of the podcast at some point. We'll just we'll build that. That would be really disastrous because art was never a good class for me. You build Legos or something. You can do that. Uh, I guess I was I was never very good with that either. So <laughs> forget it. No arts and crafts episode. Yeah. Um, so look. So uh, I mean, I, I think that. Project managers in uh, with almost every role that you have within an agency, it, the answer is it depends, right? Sure. I mean, it's uh, I don't have my T-shirt on today, so I can't just point to it. But it it really does it it depends, you know what what your model is, what services you're delivering, what the rest of your team does. Um, you know, there are some kinds of agencies who are listening who you almost certainly could benefit from a project manager, particularly if you're, you know, doing more, um, you know, digital stuff, web dev, those mm-hmm. kinds of things where you're managing contractors and you've got a lot of moving parts. Those are ideally suited for having project managers who are different from <laughs> account managers. Right. If you're doing basically straight traditional PR, you may not benefit as much. 
because you may not have those bright lines where it's easier to say, okay, this is the project manager's responsibility and this is the account manager. It may be easier to have it all within one. So you need to think through what works. And so my suggestion, anytime you're thinking about hiring a role or assigning someone a role internally is to make a list. What are you know, what are you working on? What are the tasks that are taking time? This is where time tracking is valuable. If you know what you're investing your time in and you know the pain points you're trying to solve, then you can figure out what the right solution to that is, whether that's in-house contractor, or hire a new employee or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, and we've had an episode on tools and software to use. And you always make the, the point that the, the software or the tool that you use is the one that you'll use not you know yep. and, and i think the project manager is the same way it's i need you to be a minute please sorry as as jenny project manages her <sighs> student yeah well now we know why i need a project manager <laughs> but you, with all respect you need more than a project manager oh. to solve this so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, th I think with project managers, it's the same thing. All right, you know, is it somebody you're going to use? Do they, can you keep them employed full time? They're not going to be a billable person. It's going to be an administrative job, all those kinds of things. Um, we actually have one for a client that we're working with that she's internal and she manages, she manages Monday, which is the software that they use, which I'm glad of because I hate it. <laughs> Um, and then she'll, she has a, a weekly status meeting where she says, okay, here's everything that's on the docket. And she, she manages all of us and it's great. I, I love it. Manage the heck out of me, please. I don't want to do it for you. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I, I, I am not a good trains running on time person as, as any listener to this podcast will know, because who knows what day that podcast is actually going to be published that week. Cause it goes on my list for the start of the week. But I mean, as we're sitting here recording this on Thursday, this week's podcast still hasn't gone out yet because <laughs> I got distracted by other projects and just didn't have a chance to take the hour or two it will take to do the editing sure. and publishing and you know yeah. all that kind of stuff. And it wasn't a priority versus actual client work. Unfortunately. I know. Clients always take priority. They really do. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's unfortunate it you know, for unfortunate. all your clients listening out there. I'm sorry, but you know, it's, it's rough that you're, the priority for us. We'd, we'd like to be able to do the fun stuff. <laughs> but, I mean, look, I, I think part of the problem is that, that people think that, that hiring a project manager is the solution to a lot of their problems. But it's, it's, it comes down to what is that person actually doing? Right. I mean, and, and project manager, account manager, senior director, managing director, all these titles, they mean nothing. Uh, because if I go to seven different agencies and I have seven different project managers, they all do different stuff. And so you need to figure out what it is that you're actually, what you want them to do. And I, I will challenge something you said where you said that project managers are not billable. And I, I would I would dispute that because hmm. the if the project manager is actually doing client work, it should be viewed as billable time. Now, most of the listeners are not actually billing hours anyway, but it should be assigned, it should be tracked towards that project and it should go into your pricing for that project. It shouldn't yeah, be, that's fair, if it shouldn't be an overhead yeah, expense. That's fair because if you're doing it or an account director's doing it, that would be billable. That's fair. Yeah. So, so I, I think it needs to be, it needs to be thought of as such. It needs to be tracked as such. I know some agencies will actually charge you a project management fee, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I don't like just because it sends, <clears throat> to me, it sends the wrong message. Um, but I understand, I mean, I, I actually had a, an agency who did work for me in a past life, and, and they were one of the folks who said, we charge for project management. And I, I got what they were saying philosophically, that it's an important part of actually delivering the results that we wanted. At the same time, I think from a client perspective, that does come across as you're kind of nickeling and diming me, kind of like the old days when we used to charge for a page of a fax or something like that, which was the 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 as I've said I think up before on this show it's it drove me mad as a client to get a bill for you know a dollar a page for a fax I mean that was just stupid um, and so I, you know so you have to be careful with all these things but from an internal perspective as you're tracking it the time of that project manager that they're spending to manage a project for a client should be tracked as an expense for that client work and and you should be charging appropriately to capture that do not put it into overhead because that's how you start eating into profit margins very quickly yeah that's totally fair um and i i'm the same way on project management you do as a fee you do ha you have to do it but i i've i learned a very good lesson <clears throat> from a large client who might be fortune three company who 
I can't say out loud, but you can surmise, um, <clears throat> who said to me, totally get it, but it should be cost of doing business. So now we just roll it into our fee. I mean, uh, it's still there. You're still paying for it, but right. it's not a separate line item. Right. Well, and, and this is, I mean, this is a, probably a good topic for a different episode, but agencies often are far too transparent about line items. <laughs> and it's fair. Just, yeah. just tell them it costs this. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, it, and, and I was just working with an agency a few weeks ago and, and was looking through some of their proposals and they they gave excruciating detail huh. in their proposals and, you know, what things cost and, and, and how many hours and all. I said, well, are you billing by the hour? No. OK. If they go over those number of hours, are you charging more? No. I'm like, why are you telling them the number of hours it's going to take then? It's 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 right. irrelevant. It's, it is irrelevant. Yes. To it, and if you're, I said, you know, you're showing all these individual line items. Will you do that individual line item for that price? If they say no to everything else in the proposal, no. Okay, well then, then don't even show it because to the extent you show things in a proposal, it should be because it's an actual menu option that you're willing to provide. And if you're not, don't don't, don't do break it. it out. Yeah. Right. Keep yeah. it rolled. Yeah. Keep it rolled together. And the yeah. more that you, the more that you show that stuff, the more that you get into just idiotic conversations with clients who say, "I don't understand why it would take that long or cost that much to do those kinds of things." And project management is very much the same way. They don't they don't really want to know that. It's you know people don't need to know how the sausage is made. They just need to know that it tastes good. Yep. And so you need to be thinking about all of these things the same way. But you do need to think about what it takes to get that sausage made and so that's where the project management comes in internally and you have to figure out you know is a is a body the solution is it that someone on your team just takes on that responsibility because they're mm -hmm. particularly mm -hmm. organized and that's mm -hmm. a good mm -hmm. use of their time is it is it that you put more systems and processes in place and it's not a person right i mean there's all right. sorts of different ways to solve the problem so it but it really comes back to figuring out what is your pain point what problem are you actually trying to solve and only then can you figure out is that a resource problem or is it something else yeah um it's funny you say that because even if you break out the project management fee in a proposal or on an invoice to your point if you're not offering that as a standalone menu item that's, that's a really great way to look at it. I actually just had a conversation with a client who said, Ugh, we have a client who wants to see our timesheets and it bites me in the butt every time because they're like, why did it take two hours to do this? <laughs> ah, that I, I, if, if a client wanted to see my timesheets, I'd be like, yeah, see, there's the door. Right. I mean, I, I mean that's, I, that's the thing. People don't understand. You don't have to do that. I mean, now, there are certain, yeah. there are certain yeah. contracts, you know, if you're sure. some government, government contracts, and, yeah. things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything we say, there's always the exception that yep. proves the rule. Yep. But generally speaking, you don't have to disclose that to clients and you shouldn't. There's no – they need to know what the results are that they're getting and how much it's costing them. They don't need to know all of the detail behind it. And, and and project managers, while they can be expensive, if you're actually using someone as a project manager, it ought to be because it saves you time and money right, right. in some fashion. Right. So, yes, it's an expense on the one hand, but it's because you're, you're shifting work from probably a higher priced front end person who's dealing with clients to someone who's probably lesser cost behind the scenes. Oh, I will say good project managers aren't cheap, right? So, you know. Project managers shouldn't be, you know, someone just out of college that you throw this to, which is one of the things that I see right. a lot of folks Fair. do. Yep. Oh, we'll just, you know, we'll throw it on you. I mean, it needs to be someone who understands how to make the machinery work. And it tends to work more so in larger organizations where you've got contractors and yep. different teams internally. Yep. And you have to, you're, you're, there's someone who's sort of working across disciplines in order to solve problems for clients. So if you've if your clients are generally, you know, just doing one thing with you and it's it's much more vertically oriented from a service standpoint, project managers aren't going to serve you as well. It's when they've got some graphic design and some content creation and some social media and some advertising. Project managers really excel in those environments because they know this needs this team needs this before this can happen and so they can mm -hmm. they can figure out how to work those things through. And they also can help the teams figure out priorities because every client team always thinks that whatever they've got is the top priority. Right. And so, <laughs> I mean, when, when I oversaw a graphic design team for a larger agency as, as one of my many uh, shops underneath me, I would have people come in and say, well, you know, this is I, I need this tomorrow. And I'd be like, OK, great. 
but they're working on this for this larger client that's, you know, and it's for their board or something like that. So that's going to have to be a higher priority. And and so you, project managers can help sort those things out so they figure out what a real priority is for the team versus what the priority is for that individual who's just hearing from the client that this needs to be done yesterday. Yeah. And, you know, as you're talking about this, I'm remembering back to my ad agency days when we had a traffic department and Levon yep. and Marsha, they were they were in charge of making sure that if you had an ad campaign or, a, you know, we, we did all sorts of events and, you know, PR stunts and things like that. If you had something like that, that you had a, a date in mind and they would work it back and they would say, OK, well, we need this for production by this date or it's, this isn't going to happen. And they would give you all of that and then they would stay on top of you to get that stuff done, because if you didn't deliver your part on time, then it screwed up the whole process. Right. Levon and Marsha. Yeah, and, and it's and different kinds of agencies call it different things. Ad yeah. agencies tend to call it a traffic, traffic manager. Yeah. You know, digital agencies call it a project manager. PR agencies probably just call it an account manager and stick someone with the, the yeah. job, yeah. right? So yeah. it's it's it, again that goes back to titles not really mattering. It's it's really the the functionality that matters. Yeah, I will say one of the questions that was asked, you know, should the project manager be client facing or internal? Um, the the best project managers I've known are not good with clients. Yeah, I would because, agree with that. Because to be a good project manager, you you need to be much more uh, methodical, logical, mm -hmm. more of an operator, mm -hmm. and and you tend to shy away from diplomacy because you'll simply say, you know, that I I've got you know this team has this bandwidth or this contractor has this bandwidth, and so this is how we're going to use it. You can't tell that directly to the client. No. <laughs> so so the account manager or the client service team has to figure out how to take what the project manager has told them and somehow massage it into something right. that's not going to make the client say, I don't care that you have other clients. Because the reality is <laughs> right. they don't all, <laughs> all, all of your clients know that you have clients other than them. They just don't believe that they should matter. Right. <laughs> right. They believe that, yes, absolutely. Right. I, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it, it's, uh, and, and and they'll and they'll pay lip service to it. oh we you know we know you're busy we know you've got other clients you know they don't mean it no I, I mean they, they whatever it is they want they want yes and and they don't really care what it's going to impact on no, other clients and so the a good client service person knows how to try to work through that and make them feel like they are the most <laughs> special client in the world understanding that if all of your clients were the most special a it wouldn't be true and b you'd never make money right that is true. That is true. I remember when I started my agency and the, the very first client I had said, I understand that you're going to grow this business and I understand that you will have other clients, but I am your first and I always want to be treated like that. Okay. And he still is. He's <laughs> all right. So you're still treated like our first client. <laughs> Well, see, see, my smart ass answer to that would be, well, you know, you, you learn a lot. And so generally after the first client, we get better. But if, if you're going to always be our first client, we'll, we'll give you that same level of service that we <laughs> we won't take into into account all that other knowledge that we've we've garnered over yeah, the years. No, but, he's helped us grow uh, tremendously. Yeah. And, and look, I mean, every agency needs those clients. And, and there are clients who are who have been helpful to you as an agency and you've got a good relationship with and you'll always find ways to bend over backwards for them. And it's appropriate. But the reality is, you know, project managers help you to to figure out how to keep all of your clients as happy as possible, yes. um, you know, by by keeping all of the trains moving on time. And yep. it's, it is it is not easy. And the larger you not get and the, and the more particularly as, as more agencies are adopting this thing that I've heard of called the peso model. <laughs> I, I don't know where I've heard of it, but I've, I don't it's, know either. It's this thing where apparently you use like paid, earned, shared, owned, huh. and and so that requ that requires a lot of different expertise and does, yeah. and team members and contractors and all that. And so in order to to be able to pull it all together, you need to make all those moving parts fit together. Project managers can be really helpful in doing that. Whether that project manager is full time, contractor, part of someone else's responsibility, whatever, but you need to figure out how to get that done. Amen. And so on that note, I, I think I'm going to write this episode up as a success because our third co-host has been mostly mostly behind the scenes. Mostly. We, I mean, you can we, hear her, but... Yeah, you can hear her, yeah. But, you know, I mean, if you're listening on computer speakers, you might not hear her as much. You know, I've got earbuds in, so I, I obviously can hear her, but <laughs> that's okay. And, and we didn't see the hamster. The dog didn't make an appearance, so... Well, the hamster's about to make an appearance, so we should end it now. 
<laughs> On that note, then, I'm Chip Griffin. And I'm Chitty Dietrich. And it depends.